Hey, hi there, welcome back. Today we're going to continue on with the Learn CSS colors by building a set of colored markers. So step 41, now it's time to add other details to the markers, starting with the first one. So in the first marker, div elements change the class one to red. So change that to red. Perfect. Um, to update the, well, we need to update the one selector now because that's not used in our HTML file. We just do red. And there we go, it's changed back to black because of the background color being applied. And that's why it went away because it wasn't being, sort of wasn't used anywhere. So step 43, update the RGB function in the red so that the red value is at its max. So that's the first color, so red. And that's good. Step 44, change the class two to green in the second marker div. So green. And the blue, or sorry, the third one will be blue. So red, green, blue. And then I'm assuming now step, yep, 45 is to update um, the selectors to the new classes that we've given them in the HTML. There we go. So step, oh, it's just frozen. There we go, step 46. So a very common way to apply color to an element with CSS is with hexadecimal or hex values. Whilst hex values sound complicated, they're really just another form of RGB values. And hex values always start with a hashtag character or pound character. Um, I'm not sure uh, how you might say that, but yeah, normally a, a hashtag and then take six, char six characters from zero to nine and A to F. And the first pair of characters represent red, the second pair represent green and the third pair represent blue. So for example, 4B is the red value, 53 is the green value and 20 is the blue value. So on the green CSS rule, set the background color to a hex value or hexadecimal. So that will be hashtag. So it'll be 00 for red, FF for green and 00 for blue. And as you can see here, so obviously zero and A are sort of the lowest values and then nine and f are the highest so because we want effectively if you're looking at an rgb value i believe that would be i guess 255 for green that's what it would give you so let's check that code perfect so step 47 you may already be familiar with hex uh, sorry decimal or base 10 values which go from 0 to 9 hexadecimal or base 16 go from 0 to 9 and then a to f so actually here you can see um, that's the scale we're working on, sorry, not A, um, also being sort of lower here. So zero, zero is obviously 0% zero of that color and FF is 100%. So it, as you can see here, that translates to this RGB value to lower the intensity of the green by setting the hex code to 7F. So it'll be 7F. And there we go. So step 48, there's another color model called the HSL and that's hue, saturation, sorry, saturation and lightness. Um, and again, it's just another way to represent colors. Um, so this one accepts three values and it being numbers from zero to 360 um, for hue and then percentage is zero to 100. And saturation is also a percentage of zero to 100. So I can, I'm you know, not going to read all of this out, but essentially um, for this one, the HSL value on that hue saturation lightness, if you remember, is set to 240. So 240, saturation is 100% and the lightness is 50%. And there we go. So let's submit and go to the next challenge. So step 49, you've learned a few ways to set flat colors in CSS, but you can also use a color transition or gradient on an element. So a gradient is when one color transitions into another um, and the CSS linear gradient function lets you control the direction. Um, so you can imagine if this goes from red to blue, um, you can also do from blue to red sort of the other way um, and obviously up and down as well. So one thing to remember that the linear gradient function actually creates an image element and then it's usually paired with a background property that accepts an image as a value. So in the red CSS rule, change the background color to background. So let's take away the dash color. Perfect. 
And then probably finally for this video, uh, the step 50, the linear gradient function is very flexible, but here's the basic syntax. So it's gradient direction, and then color one, color two, and then you can keep going on. Um, and yeah, I think it's there's a number of different options you can pass in here. So gradient direction is the great direction the line is used for the transition. Um, and then color one and color two are arguments where the colors that will be used in the transition themselves or itself, sorry. Um, these can be any type of color, including hex, uh, keywords, so red, green, blue, um, RGB, or HSL. So let's apply a red to green gradient along a 90 degree line in the first marker. So we want to set the background property to linear gradient, linear gradient, and pass in the value uh, 90 degrees. Oh, sorry, it's actually uh, background is the uh, property and the value here will be linear dash gradient and we pass in uh, 90 degrees as the gradient direction and that should now pass perfect cool so that's all for this video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one